In 1964, 30 million Americans lived in poverty. Although most of the poor were white, the power of the civil rights movement raised the issue to a place on the national agenda and stirred the new president to action. Can you help us free these Americans from the prison of poverty? And if you can, let me hear your voices. As a young man, Johnson had taught Mexican-American children in rural Texas. Later, as a congressman, he idolized Franklin Roosevelt and dreamed of completing the New Deal. He named his vision for a better America, the Great Society. It included civil rights, voting rights, support for the arts, medical care to the elderly, and help for the poor. Lyndon Johnson was a master at moving legislation through Congress, but he had no blueprint for ending poverty. For that, he looked to Shriver. If a general was asked, you know, I want you to launch war on Grenada, could you invade it and take it over? Well, you know, that's something you can get your mind around. But a war on poverty, that's like saying, could you, uh, in front of say, could you wage war on gravity? He thought, oh, oh my God, how am I going to do this? He began by ordering research. And then he went looking for what the author Michael Harrington called the other America, the invisible poor. In Appalachia, Shriver saw schools that were shacks and heard stories of children eating dirt from the inside of stovepipes. In the Deep South, he witnessed the rule of Jim Crow, whereby black children were kept out of school to pick cotton, while their parents faced violence if they attempted to vote. In the North, most blacks were confined to ghettos, cut off from good schools, housing, and jobs. When Shriver saw the research he ordered, he was stunned. Of all the nation's poor people, half were children. He became very, very committed to the point where this was no longer just a, a political assignment or something he needed to do because the president asked him, but this was something that had to be done and done right, and he became very passionate about it. People are interested in being treated as human beings. They're interested in having other people treat them as the, as the Declaration of Independence says, as equals. That's the first thing that's needed in the war against poverty. The Civil Rights Movement had really elevated the notion of equality, and he wants to extend that spirit now to programs to end poverty nationwide. You have to have that sense of human respect and dignity and equality before these other specific programs, like a health program or an educational program, can have its maximum effect. Mr. Shriver, you say that you hope that something... Shriver called up anyone who knew anything about poverty. Activists, scholars, the priests and nuns who worked among the poor, and the reporters who wrote about them. In 16 weeks, they had a plan. It's not a program of federal handouts to alleviate poverty, temporarily. It is aid to help those who are willing to help themselves get out of poverty by building up their skills, increasing their employability. Shriver hated the idea of handouts, which he equated with what he called cheap grace, a kind of a charity which does not empower people. The plan created OEO, the Office of Economic Opportunity. As in the Peace Corps, he wanted the poor to lift themselves out of poverty, and he wanted privileged Americans to work among them. OEO launched VISTA, Head Start, Youth Corps, Job Corps, Upward Bound, Foster Grandparents, Work Study, and a way to give poor communities resources for their own anti-poverty programs called Community Action. Community Action, as its name implies, is local action. We depend completely on local communities to come to Washington with their own programs of combating poverty in the ways that they see fit to do it in their own hometown. 